Hi there, this is Dr. Evan Osar with the Institute for Integrative Health and Fitness Education. Welcome to this edition of Facebook Live, week number two, day number two of 2018. And one of our goals here at the Institute for Integrative Health and Fitness Education is to help you be that specialist and remain that specialist that your current clients need and want to accomplish their health and fitness goals, as well as be that resource that your potential clients, if you want to grow your business, will reach out to help them accomplish their goals. Part of being a specialist, as we discussed in yesterday's post and blog, is that you want to be, to be a specialist, you need to have a certain amount of knowledge. So that way you can make your, or help your clients make educated decisions what, about what's best for their health and their fitness. So understanding basic knowledge about functional anatomy, biomechanics, and motor control, as well as the most appropriate and maybe least appropriate exercises will help your clients ultimately work towards accomplishing their fit, health and fitness goals regardless of what they are. Now, also part of that is understanding what some of the myths around our industry are because you need to educate your clients because they're reading the internet, they're listening to their friends, they're listening to other healthcare professionals and or fitness professionals, and they're getting often confused because there's a lot of conflicting messages out there. So this week on Facebook Live, as part of our coaching series, we've been talking about coaching as well, is to help you understand some of these myths. Now, the first myth, the first myth I'm going to cover this week is a myth I heard when I first started in training over 20 years ago, and it's still being perpetuated today. I had a friend just send me a, a Facebook post by somebody who works with professional athletes or, or collegiate athletes, and he said, everyone should train like an athlete because everyone's an athlete. And when I first started out in chiropractic practice and training, I trained everybody and I thought it was a great approach. I'm like, everybody's an athlete, great, awesome. So I trained everybody like an athlete and most of my clients who were not athletes, baby boomers and seniors, people who come in with chronic pain and dysfunction, they did not respond very well. And then even I started to break down using a lot of these same strategies. Because here's the thing, think about your athletes, your high level division one collegiate athlete. I just saw a collegiate athlete last week, division one. Who are these individuals? And your professional athletes, your Olympic athletes, who are these athletes? They're the 1% of the population. They have better genetics. They have better training. They have better coaches. They have better recuperation. They spend more time recuperating. They spend more time training. They spend more time with their nutrition. So they're doing the things to train like an athlete. And they're in a position to train like an athlete. And this does not mean that your clients, your current clients, aren't trying to perform at a high athletic level. So you must train them appropriately. So if you have clients that are running marathons, doing triathlons, performing at a high level, you need to train them probably to be somewhat athletic. However, most of the clients that present to you and I, the general population, the baby boomers and seniors, they're not athletes. They don't train like athletes. They don't function like athletes. They don't rest and recuperate like athletes. They don't focus on all those important things that athletes do. We often don't see the countless hours athletes put in to perform and train like an athlete. What we want to do as healthcare professionals, as fitness professionals, is really help our clients identify their non-optimal and inefficient strategies and help them develop more optimal and efficient strategies. That's our number one goal here. So even when that Division I athlete came to consult with me last week, even when I consult with professional athletes, my primary goal is not to train them like an athlete. My primary goal is to identify whether or not performing is optimal, optimally and or as efficiently as they can and help them define or find and develop an awareness, an appropriate way to train so that they can get, can get back to or even accomplish a level of training that they need to, to accomplish their health and fitness goals. And it's not just training them like an athlete, it's training them appropriately for where they are and then creating a specific plan to get them to where they want to go to. So in a roundabout way, what I'm trying to say is most of your general population clients that are coming to you, especially those baby boomers and seniors, shouldn't be focused on training like an athlete. They should be focusing on the fundamental principles that guide optimal and efficient posture movement, alignment, breathing control, working them strategically through the specific fundamental movement patterns, squatting, lunging, bending, pushing, pulling, rotating, balance, and gait. Teach them how to increase their functional capacity so they get stronger and can express their strength and their flexibility and their mobility and their endurance. Don't focus on training them like an athlete, focusing on helping them improve the most fundamental components to optimal posture and movement, and then they can start to exceed and 
get to the higher level that they need to, want to, and, and get back to those activities that they maybe love to do. So this is Dr. Evan Nosar with the Institute for Integrative Health and Fitness Education, helping you be the specialist and remain that specialist that your clients need, want, and your potential clients will seek out. I'll be back tomorrow on Facebook Live with the second of our four myths for this week. Take care, make it a great day. We'll see you tomorrow morning.